the end of that, uh, of course, I had orders to go to Vietnam. And we were uh, all packed up and they took us in uh, some buses over to McCord Air Force Base, which is right next door. In fact, it's today, it's all conglomerated into a single base. I think they call it uh, uh, Lewis McCord yeah. Air Base or whatever, or Lewis McCord, whatever. But, um, and we were standing around waiting to get on the Big Bird and I don't remember who the officer was, but somebody came and, and announced that if you hear your name, step over here. And they called my name and I stepped over there and they announced to this little group I was in that you folks won't be making this trip. And they sent us back, I think I had, I want to say three or five more days of leave and then I had to report to Fort Dix, New Jersey and they flew me to Germany and wow. I guarded the beer tubes with great <laughs> vigor. <laughs> so, Don't you love that whole random victim well, selection process? I'll tell you process? what, I mean, it, 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 was, it was an astounding, it, it really was, I mean, I will have to say that I have had a very fortunate life. Throughout my life I've had a great deal of good fortune and good luck uh, and I uh, I tell people it's clean living, but they know better. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, it I, I really have. I, I and I know this. I mean, I I have every appreciation for it. That uh, but that was one of the one of the biggies right there. And so how long did you spend in the army? Uh, Nineteen months and twenty six days, and yeah. uh, I was that was another well, another piece of good luck. When I got over there, uh, I found out later how it kind of worked, but uh, there was a fellow by the name of Sergeant Booker, and a uh, great big husky black fella, wonderful man, just the nicest guy you ever want to meet. But he was the, he was the section leader of the uh, personnel management office in the division headquarters building, and of course that's where all the recruits and everybody gets, fun they all get funneled through there. Well, he, what I found out he did after the fact is that he would go through and look at all the records of all the incoming recruits, and if it looked like somebody that you know he might be interested in, then he'd pull the records and you'd get interviewed. Well, I had done very well on the army tests they give you during your your initial training and stuff, and so there was a big stamp. He showed me this later. The, the, at HAP, it said a big stamp with about two inch high letters on the outside. And he, it stood for high aptitude potential, uh -huh. and he and he said that's why you got your interview. And so we he had me sit there, and I I watched. There were about three other guys that came through there, and I was like the fourth to be interviewed. And he, he sat me down and said, uh, "Well, I see you kind of rubbernecking around here. You got the place figured out." And I said, "Oh no, but I said I can kind of see the the you know I see the the signs and one thing another." And, this is kind of how the system works and stuff and he says well he says I looked at your record here and he says it would be a waste to send you to a line unit how'd you like to work here instead <laughs> I just smiled and said who do I have to kill to get the job he said, you're gonna fit right in here and it was the office was 29 guys and and we were really good friends I mean yeah and of course and most of them uh, were just like me. Most of them were draftees. Uh, the guy that I was, the guy that I was replacing, his name was Dick Sanks, and he was gra or he was uh, drafted right out of law school in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, I mean, he was married, no children, but I mean, they snapped him right out of law school and said, "Come over here, we need you." And and then he so he taught me uh, his job over there, and then he left. But but. Uh, what, where were we in Germany? I was I was in Würzburg. It was the headquarters for the Third Infantry Division at that time. Yeah. And and, uh, and my my function there, my job, uh, the major part of my job, I'll put it that way, was um, reassignment of senior enlisted personnel. So, uh, but one of them, one of my parts of my job uh, was that once a month uh, I had to drive to Heidelberg. The headquarters and pick up uh, a levy for Vietnam. It's a list of people that were going to be sent to Vietnam from from uh, the 
units that, that mm -hmm. we controlled in the 3rd Infantry Division. So, uh, and it, as it worked out, uh, I got I would get to take my own car. I bought a little Volkswagen. I had all that money that I made in Alaska. <laughs> I had a $9,000 summer in 69. That's a lot of money then. <laughs> So Barb and I, I, I bought a, I bought a brand new little Voxy Bug, and she would go with me. She came in, uh, say I got there in like March, I want to say, and she came over in June. Uh, she was des designated an undesirable dependent because you know I didn't have enough rank and stuff, but I thought she was pretty desirable. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love it? <laughs> but anyway, we. But we would have a lot of we'd have some really good times. We would we would travel uh, down there and um, and uh, make a day trip out of it, you know, yeah. and, and stuff. And and uh, I have another anecdote that goes along with that. We had a flat tire one time and we were late, and so it was after five when I got there. And and have you been in the service? Oh yeah. Well, you understand yeah. the charge of quarters thing yeah. and stuff. Well, anyway, I so I'm just flying uh, yeah, up this headquarters building. It was an old, what it was, was all, all the buildings that, that the Army occupied in, in uh, Heidelberg there were mostly old Nazi headquarters buildings and stuff, you know, and very fancy. And, and anyway, I was just grabbing the, the big balls on the newel posts and just flying around this landing. And I run into this person and he goes on the stairs and I go on the landing and I look over there, and Christ, there's two stars perched on each shoulder, and I'm thinking, oh, God, they're going to just shoot me at dawn. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets up, and he looks at me, and he says, Specialist, is it Randstrom? What are you in such a rush about? And I blurted out that I had a flat tire, and I was late to get the 3rd Infantry Division levy for Vietnam, and, and I had to go down the hall here, and yada, yada. And, he says, well, let's go see if we can find that for you. And so we walked up there, and, and the guy that was the charge of quarters guy had his feet up on the on the lip of the window there and reading like a playboy or something. And the general cleared his throat, and he this guy says, be with you in a minute. <laughs> and all of a sudden, his demeanor changed completely, and it was, you'll be with me now, soldier. <laughs> And his butt muscles threw his ass out of that chair and into an upright position, just like that. <laughs> what can I do for the general, sir? <laughs> and then, then the nice came back, and he says, "Well, you can get my friend, Mister uh, uh, Specialist Randstrom here, his Vietnam levy for the Third Infantry Division. You suppose you could do that for a soldier?" <laughs> and we went outside afterward. Just a wonderful guy, and. Well, and like you said, if you you've been in the military, you you understand that the I I always felt that the higher up the rank these people were, the nicer they were because they knew they'd arrived, and and especially yeah. if you had one or two stars, I mean, you knew you'd arrive. <laughs> and you didn't have to you didn't have to kiss many fannies at that at that yeah. level, you know. Yeah. And but anyway, um, well, he walked out with me, and I introduced him to Barb, and we had about a 10, 12, 15 minute conversation. He waved goodbye and left, and that was that. And and uh, but then later, this Captain Morris, that was the officer in charge of our of our office, he was scared to death of of the brass. I mean, anybody that was even one day more in rank than him, you know, in in grade, was he was just spooked about it. And, uh, several it would be several months later I think four three four five months later we were having this inspector general inspection and I'm standing at attention and my desk is right next to this hallway there and of course who should it be but the same two-star general and he's walking down the hall with his little entourage behind him and he sees me and <laughs> I kind of look over a little bit and our eyes meet and he stops and reaches across and shakes my hand and this Captain Morris according to the guys in the the rest of the guys in the office just about wet himself oh my god Ransom knows a two-star general Jesus and you could just see that the, the, the guys that were away from me that could see what was going on they said they could just see it running through his head what have I done to piss him off ever because I'm dead <laughs> it was just it was pretty funny well well let, going back you know to the when you were smoke jumping before you went to Alaska when you got drafted so oh, yeah so when did you start smoke jumping well I uh, I, I worked for the Forest Service that first year in 65 on the hotshot crew up 